Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Dmitry Vinnik, and here is my colleague, KJ Kim. We are both lead software engineers at Salesforce. And today we will talk about designing pixel perfect user experiences with Community Cloud. So, first and foremost, we have to start with a little bit of formality, forward looking statement, which basically says that all your purchase and sales decisions should be made based on the products that are currently available on the market, not something necessarily presented at the, uh, this uh, particular talk. So with that out of the way, let's actually get to the fun part. And uh, we'll begin by establishing the agenda, the outline for today. And so we will begin by discussing the anatomy of the themes, which are basically the building blocks of your pixel-perfect user experience. Then we will move on to uh, discussing and exploring global themes, particularly around out-of-the-box theming that we as a platform provide to you. And last but not least, we will discuss how to build custom themes and how to deploy them further for your particular use case. So with that, let's actually get to the uh, interesting part, anatomy of the theme. So when we talk about theming in general, we have to understand that themes are the building blocks. They are the building blocks of your community. And every community would have base SLDS theming in place. But what interests us the most today are out-of-the-box themes, basically, as I've mentioned, theming that we as a platform provide to you to address your use cases, and the custom themes that you as a developer can create on your own. And of course, because themes are complex enough, they have building blocks as well. And those building blocks are fairly straightforward. It's branding that basically addresses the styling of your community, and the theme layouts, which drive that uniform user experience throughout your community. And custom themes are any more different than the out-of-the-box ones in terms of the building blocks. They also consist of branding and the theme layouts. So fairly straightforward so far. But let's actually look in the example, because it's the best way to summarize some sort of a theory. So let's look at this community, Hulu community. Here, if we were to address it from the theming perspective, we would discuss it f from a branding point of view, where branding basically styles the entire community, the page content, the common regions. But when we talk about the theme layouts, we are only concerned with the top and bottom parts, or as we call them, header and footer. And this theme layout is what I actually like to focus on the most today. So again, theme layouts. If I were to look at more examples, probably some of these templates and themes you've seen in the past, and if I were to approach them from a perspective of theming as anatomy, you would see that the page content might stay the same, but the theme layouts, those highlighted regions, they would provide you with that uniform, pixel-perfect user experience. So that's what basically today is all about. To go further to exploring global themes as a whole, you have to begin with out-of-the-box themes, something that we as a Salesforce help you with to actually address your common use cases. And when it comes to the global out-of-the-box theming, we provide you with these three awesome themes, global themes, Amber, Cyprus, and the Stella. Right now, you can already see how different they are from common Napili, Coca, Coa templates that you might have got used to uh, in the past couple of years. And we also provide you with three more, which come to a total of six new themes that we provide you as a platform. Webster, Jepson, and Citizens. So all these three, six themings that we uh, sh ship to you out of the box and what you can use to address, hopefully address your common use cases. And with that, I'd like to actually uh, let KJ to lead the next section of today's talk, how to build and deploy custom themes. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, so let's talk about building custom themes. And before we do that, let's address the why. So as you've seen, we ship six out-of-the-box themes, which are pretty versatile, and they're flexible, and then you can configure them to however you want. So why would you ever want to build a custom theme? One reason might be that your company's brand comes with a very specific look and feel that goes beyond the boundaries of our out-of-box theme, which means that you might have to build your own custom. Or it might be that you're utilizing other design systems uh, other than the Salesforce Lightning design system that we provide, that things like material design, bootstrap, foundation, and those kind of things. So in those cases, you'll have to 
build your own team from scratch. But that's going to be really straightforward, and we're going to do a bit of a short demo on building a custom theme using uh, Material Design Lite. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have a simple SFDX project. Um, SFDX, for those of you who don't know, is a simple CLI tool for pushing and pulling data to uh, Salesforce Scratch org. And this is Visual Studio Code and uh, IDE. And we have a Salesforce extension for VS Code installed. So before we create our theme layout component, which uh, is a core part of uh, a community theme, let's take a look at our static resources. Because we uh, at Salesforce take security very seriously, we recommend that any third party resource that you have, you upload to our static resource and, uh, so that you know where the sources are coming from. So as you can see, um, Material.js, which is a Material Design Lite uh, library, we have copied over to static resource. And once we push this source to our scratch org, it's going to get uploaded with our source. So let's go ahead and create our Aura component. Let's name this MDL theme layout. And SFDX is going to create all the files necessary for us to create a theme layout component. So we want to do about, uh, several things here. So first, we want to expose this component as a theme layout. We also want to load static resource to the component that we've uploaded to the MDL folder. And we also want to uh, add some customization to this component. We want to expose community name and header color as an attribute so the builder can interact with it. And we also want to derive nav color from the header color. Lastly, we want to add some markup for the theme layout, which is just going to be standard HTML, and also hook that up to the component attributes. So let's begin. So to expose this component as a theme layout, it's pretty straightforward. You only have to uh, implement Force Community Theme Layout interface. And what this does is that it will tell the community builder this is a theme layout and allow it to set it as a theme layout component. So that's really straightforward. And to load up the static resources, uh, you can use a markup called Lightning Require, which is going to automatically map your resources folder or a static resources folder to your resources folder. And you can see here that we're referencing our um, material design fonts and material design CSS. One thing to note here is that this is an asynchronous process. So on your component initialization, it's actually not going to have the scripts ready, which means that you'll have to interact with the script after script loads. So let's go to the controller and populate this function. Let's overwrite our uh, default action. So Material Design Lite gives us a global object or component handler, which has an upgrade DOM method. And this is required to add any interactability to the uh, Material Design elements. So anytime a component uh, design system requires extra JavaScript to be loaded after the CSS loads, then you'll need to do something similar here. So going back to the CMP file, let's add some attributes. So as mentioned, we want to expose community name and header color for customization. But we want to derive the nav color from the header color. And let's do that in the calculate nav color method after the component initializes. So this method is pretty straightforward. I have a little snippet I copied from here, uh, which uh, basically takes an RGB or a hex value, and then it will either darken or lighten it based on a percentage. So you can see here that I'm grabbing the header color, darkening it by 30%, and setting it back to the nav color on component init. And finally, let's add some markup. So as you can see, I'm just adding a standard HTML that I've copied from GetMDL. Um, but we need to interact or, or hook up the interactions with the component attributes. So let's go ahead and do that. Here I want to expose the community name. And I also want to hook up the colors. But because component attributes are not accessible from the component CSS file, we actually have to use this either in the CMP file inline or in the JS file. So here in the uh, header element, I'm going to actually have an inline style block that uses the header color. And I'll be doing the same to the nav bar. Um, you can notice here that uh, we have a static set of navigation um, elements, but we want to also hook into the community's dynamic navigation, which allows you to hook into like. Uh, the object pages or the internal routes that we have. 
So to do that, we first have to extend this component. So extending this component from navigation menu base gives us access to an attribute called uh, menu items, which you can now iterate through and then populate our dynamic menus. So right above here, let's uh, paste in our snippet. So you can see here that we're using auto iterate to iterate through the menu item and then hooking it to the on click uh, on nav click controller. So let's go populate that. So here you can see that we're simply grabbing the menu item ID from the, uh, the HTML attribute. And then we're getting the super component, which is the navigation menu base that we talked about, and calling the navigate method. So this will actually give you a hook into our internal navigation. Let's uh, check out the CSS file. So we want to do two things in the CSS file. So uh, unfortunately, we're not getting rid of SLDS in lieu of material design. It still is there underneath. But all the SLDS classes are namespaced. But there are some elements like anchor, which is overridden by SLDS. And we have to just override it to make our demo look prettier. Also lets us have some styling that's um, relevant to our demo, but not really relevant for uh, whatever your need is. So let's take a look at the design file, which is a file that's uh, used to expose some of the component attributes to the builder environment. So here you can see that I have a label for my um, design file, which basically will expose this component as a material design theme layout to the builder. And then we have a header color attribute here. Um, and we're setting a type of color. This is because we want to expose this attribute as a color editor and not just a string editor. And here in the community name, you can see that we don't have a type, so it's going to be just defaulting to uh, string input. So in a normal work process, I'll be just use, bringing up the tool, and I'll be pushing source to the default scratch for. But for the sake of the demo, I've already done that. So let's take a look. Here, I have a community with just a standard service template. Uh, if we go to Settings, Theme, and Configure, you can see that all the theme layouts that we have. Um, here on the page assign column, it tells you how many pages are affected uh, by this. So you can see that if I change the default column, it's going to affect 50, uh, 37 routes in our community. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see that our material design theme layout has been populated in the dropdown. So this pop-up just tells us that some of the regions that exist in the default template doesn't exist in our new uh, template, um, which, which is OK, because it's not going to nuke anything. It's going to preserve it and then uh, bring it back whenever you switch back to our old theme layout. Let's press OK. So in the background, you can see that we now have a, a whole new community look and feel uh, using the material design. And you can ha uh, see all the interactability that comes with it. So let's try packaging this and deploying it to a different community in the same org so that we don't have to redo all this effort that we just did. So if you go to Settings um, and then go into Developer, Export a Theme, here, you can fill out all this information um, and export this theme as a package, uh, meaning that you can deploy it uh, either through Metadata API or if it's in the same org. So you can see that we have our community image here. We can write some summary. And you can add some features, and you can press export. But for the sake of the demo, I've already done that. So let's go to a different community. So going to the theme setting, um, you can press Change Theme, which some of you might have seen in the keynote. And alongside our out-of-the-box theme, you can see that our new theme has been exported properly. So, and all the features and descriptions that you put in here are, are all persisted. So let's try activating this. Give it a second. And now you can see that our look and feel of the community has been swapped out while the content of the community uh, repaints. And if you go to theme settings, you can see that uh, all the attributes that we exposed for the theme component exist here. And that's as, that's, uh, that's how simple it is to create your own custom theme layout.
So now that you've seen how simple it is to create your own custom theme, there are several things that you can do to try this out yourself. One is to go to our Salesforce doc, where you can check out all the documentation for the features that we just demoed here. And you can also do a community trail mix that we custom created for this session that outlines all the things that we did here. And also, you can try it yourself. Uh, the demo that I just did, I uploaded to GitHub. Um, so you can clone the repo and have your own scratch org and try creating your own custom theme in less than 10 minutes. And that's all we have. Thank you for uh, attending the sessions.